Today we will be drawing an illustration of a monster-like creature. You will learn how the layers work and how to use different brushes and brush packs. Let's start by creating two more layers in addition to the background and naming the middle as the body. Naming layers properly will help you keep your work organized. Next, choose the classic brush, go to the brush tip menu, and choose the hairbrush pack. Today we are going with this one because we want a furry monster. Now we will start drawing the head of our creature by drawing a circle and filling it in. The diameter of the brush is on the larger side so we can see more details of the fur. We chose red, but you can use whatever color you want. When we finish the head, we will reduce the brush diameter and draw the ears. Then with the same diameter, we will draw a body for our monster. You can use your imagination here. You can make your creature thin, round, or tall. When you're done with the body, it is time to make the outlines for the ears, arms, and legs. Change the brush to another texture brush and reduce the diameter. Once the ears are done, let's lower the diameter and start drawing the hands. At this stage, you can also think about your monster's look. Does it have five fingers or only two? Are they long or short? Now we can start drawing legs. You can create your own shape or mimic the shape of animal legs like a horse or duck. And remember that in this work, you don't need to follow the rules of anatomy or make it look realistic. After the outlines are ready, we can start filling the hands and legs. Change the diameter according to the thickness of the shape. You can also make legs or hands different colors from the body, but we made them the same color. It's time to add a new layer. Go to the layer menu, click on the top layer, and name it a body too. Because the top layer is selected, whatever we draw next will be on top of our previous drawing. This monster will have only one eye and a mouth. Next, let's go to the color wheel and use the slider to change it to a darker shade for the outline of the eye and mouth, and maybe a smaller diameter for the brush, like so. Let's quickly sketch out where the eye should be and an indicator of where we would like the mouth to be. Then we will draw the mouth and teeth. At this stage, you can decide your character's emotion. Is it happy and smiling or sad? Also, you can choose the shape, size, and amount of teeth. Are there three or five? Are they sharp? Are they big or small? This red monster will have three white teeth and let's fill in the eye at the same time too. Let's fill in the legs with darker colors because they are in the shadow. Also, draw the eyebrow using the same color. Okay, now that we have the general outlines in place, we will add a new layer above the body layer and name it eye, where we will start drawing our eye in more detail. For the eyeball, we will use different shades of white. Choose a very light yellow and fill in the eyeball. Then, choose a very light blue and fill in only the top of the eye so it will look like light is reflecting off it. What color should this monster's eye be? Maybe a greenish blue to go with its fur? Now we will choose the blue color and fill in the iris with it. You can select other colors depending on what color of eye or eyes you want for your character. If your character has multiple eyes, they can all be different colors. Again, put a lighter color on the top of the iris to give the feeling of light reflecting off of it. To brighten it up a bit more, 
Let's choose the white color and draw some strokes around the pupil. Next, with a black color, fill the pupil. We want some light reflections on the right side of the eye, so let's select a white and draw some squares in the eyes. Actually, let's outline the iris with a black color. With the white again, continue drawing the reflections and on top of the outline as well. Draw strokes from the pupil and outline, but don't make them even to give the eye a bit more liveliness. Now with a dark red color, fill in the eyelid and outline of the eye. After, shade one side of the eyelid with a light red color. Let's zoom out a bit to see how it looks. Okay, it probably needs a bit more contrast. We can outline the eyelid a bit more with the darker red color. Once we are happy with the eye, we have to go to the layers again, make a new one, and name it mouth. Make sure it is above all the other layers. With teeth, it is important to use many different shades to make them look more real. Here we have used a light yellow as a base, a light blue to give them some highlights, and a gray for shadows. This way you can see the light comes from the right side, and the shadows are on the left side. In the same way, the reflection on the eye is on the right side. Now let's create a new layer and name it Hands. and zoom in on the right side to have better control when painting it. We will use several shades of red to give the hands more dimension. With dark red, we start by filling in the spaces where the shadows are. And with lighter reds, we fill in the center of the fingers where the highlights are. We can also use a smaller diameter brush to give the hands a bit more detail. We can move on to the next hand and do the same here. So now comes the next layer for the feet. Create a new layer and name it Feet. They look a lot like duck feet, so let's choose the eyedropper tool. Pick up the darker red color we used before when drawing the outlines and make the shape bolder. Like so. Now let's go to the color wheel and use the slider again to lighten the color so that we can create highlights in our duck feet. We must remember where the light is coming from, in this case, from the right-hand side, so the shadows will be on the left side. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and see you later.